As you should all know by now, GoPro are releasing the GoPro Hero 12 on the 13th of September. In fact, they've already taken pre-orders for it. But if you've never owned a GoPro before, or if you're thinking of upgrading to a Hero 10, Hero 11, or a brand new Hero 12, then here are 12 things you are going to need to know before you use your GoPro camera. So watch this video, folks. It will save you a ton of headaches with a new camera, and you need to know this information. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is Demon View. Hi there, welcome to the channel and I appreciate you tuning in. In this video, we're going to be looking at the top 12 things you need to know if you're new to GoPro or even an existing GoPro owner. Let's face it, a lot of you aren't going to go to GoPro.com, click on the support button, download the manual and then actually read the manual. And this will come back to bite you in the ass, trust me. As a result, this video has the top 12 tips you need to know to stay out of trouble. So with that, let's get on with the video. Tip number one, the microphone drain cover. The GoPro Hero 9, 10, 11 all share the same design, so you need to know this very important point. This here is the GoPro battery door, and under here is where you will find the battery being stored, as well as the USB-C port and SD card slot. Over the other side of the camera, you will find the microphone drain port cover. This cover is non-removable and it should not be removed at all whatsoever. Now, this microphone drain port is basically there to drain water away from the microphones inside the camera. When your camera is submerged in the water, water can basically enter in through the microphone holes. And as a result, this will block the microphones and stop you from recording clean audio. So there is a large microphone drain port under this microphone drain port cover. And basically this cover here is to protect that drain port and stop anything from entering it or from puncturing the protective steel mesh that covers it. So be very careful. This is not removable. Do not attempt to remove it. If you do, you will break it off. It is not something that opens. It is not something that should be removed. And it is not some place you should tie a lanyard around. It is only for protecting the microphone drain port. Do not try and remove it. Tip number two, use the right SD card. You are about to spend a good chunk of change on your GoPro camera, so do not sabotage yourself by using a cheap, slow SD card that's just gonna cause you issues. Now, I personally recommend using the Samsung Pro Plus card. They offer excellent performance at a great price, and I'll even put a link to the exact cards I use down below. And seriously, go purchase yourself one of these cards and use that with your GoPro. Save yourself the headache of using bad SD cards. Now, I need to mention this because it seems that on a daily basis, there's someone who ends up with issues because they've been using a terrible set SD card like the SanDisk Ultra, which should never be used in a GoPro camera. Don't go buying some no-name SD card from the internet just because you figured, hey, a one terabyte SD card for $5? That sounds excellent. No, at that price, it sounds fake. Use a recommended SD card in your camera or be prepared to have issues. Go purchase the Samsung Pro Plus cards that I use. They've been tried and tested and they work. Get one now, have it ready for when your GoPro camera arrives. And tip number three, format that SD card. Now that you've chosen the right SD card for your camera, format it before you use it. Look, the people who make SD cards, they have no idea what device it's gonna be used in. It could be used in a cell phone, an MP3 player, a digital camera, a tablet, a security camera. And the fact is, all of these devices use different formats and different block sizes for writing data. As a result, the SD card manufacturers just give their SD cards a generic format, since like I said, they have no idea what device you're gonna be using the SD card in. That generic format may not be the optimal format for your GoPro camera. That in turn can lead to file errors or SD card corruption. So don't just take the SD card out of the packaging, put it in your camera and start using it. Instead, once you put that SD card in the camera for the very first time, go into the camera menus, into the reset camera part of it, and format the SD card in the camera before you first use it. This will set the card up to use the optimal format and block size for recording video. Tip number four, the GoPro battery charger. Now, some of you may end up getting the GoPro dual battery charger to charge your camera batteries, and that's a great decision. It's what I use to charge my own camera batteries, so well done. Give yourself a pat on the back if you've made this decision. However, be aware of how the battery charger actually works, as a lot of people out there have no clue and they start complaining it only charged one battery or the other battery doesn't charge. Look folks, the dual action battery charger is a very smart charger indeed. What makes it so smart is how it actually charges the batteries. 
It doesn't just charge both batteries at the same time. If it did that, that would basically have to split the power between two batteries at the same time, which would make charging them take twice as long. Instead, when you put two batteries into the charger, it will read the batteries to see which has the highest amount of charge remaining. It will then charge that battery first. So if you put in one battery that has 20% remaining and the other battery which has 70% remaining, it's going to charge the 70% remaining battery first. Once that battery is fully charged, it will then begin to charge the other battery. This means you have a fully working, fully charged battery much faster and it's ready to use than if you decided to charge both batteries at the same time. So trust me, it's a smart, faster way to charge your camera batteries. Now, I'm going to put an Amazon link for the battery charger below with two Enduro batteries. Trust me, these are the batteries you want to use, not some cheap knockoff batteries. And the reason you get it from Amazon is because they actually ship them much faster than GoPro. If you get the battery charger with spare batteries from GoPro, they ship everything surface post. You don't get that two day delivery. So trust me, use the Amazon link to order this charger and batteries. Tip number five, know the buttons on your camera. There is the shutter button on the top of the camera and the power button on the side of the camera. Now the button on the side of the camera, which is the power and mode button, this is what you should be using to turn on your camera. The button on the top is the shutter button and quick capture button. And the reason you use this is to start your camera recording immediately. Now, if you press this quick capture button, your camera immediately powers on and it starts recording. The downside is that you can't adjust any of the camera settings or access any of the camera menus. So you have to really know this. I'm going to demonstrate this now by pressing the quick capture button. And as you can see, the camera powers on and starts recording. And there we go. And as you can see, I cannot access any of the menus on the back of the camera or change settings. If I press the quick capture button again, the camera stops recording and immediately powers off. That's why you should use the power button on the side of the camera if you actually want to change any settings or power on your camera and not have it record immediately. If I press the button on the side of the camera like so, the camera will power on, as you can see. And now it's not recording, but I can now access all the settings on the camera itself by using the touch screen on the back, I can select the presets, etc. So that's the difference between the power button on the side of the camera and the quick capture button on the top of the camera. So make sure you're using the proper buttons. Tip number six is the media mod. Now I have to admit GoPro cameras offer really good audio quality and they sound fantastic. However, there will be times you want to use an external microphone. Now, I tend to use my Rode Wireless Go 2 uh, microphones due to their excellent audio quality even in the windiest of weather. However, to use external microphones, you are going to need to purchase a GoPro Media Mod. Now, this allows you to use a standard 3.5mm TRS line in or microphone cable with your camera. Tip number seven, the GoPro Labs firmware. Now this is alternative firmware for your camera that everybody should be using. This can be downloaded from the GoPro website itself and I will leave a link down below. Uh, this firmware unlocks additional features on your camera and is just awesome. It allows you to do many things with your camera such as motion detection, uh, start recording uh, when it detects sounds, increase the bit rate, change settings all by simply pointing your camera at a QR code. However, the very first thing you should be doing with the GoPro Labs firmware is setting up your owner information on the camera. This basically allows you to have a customized message displayed on the rear screen of your camera every time it's powered on. Now, this could be an email address, a website address, a phone number, or whatever you want. It will also create a copy of this information upon the SD card itself and embed that information into the metadata of the video and photos created. This is fantastic should you ever accidentally lose your camera. I mean, if anyone finds your camera, they now know exactly who to contact and return the camera to. I honestly cannot recommend you installing this GoPro Labs firmware enough, and you really should be using it, you won't regret it. I've made videos about the GoPro Labs firmware before, and I will post those links below so you can learn more about this amazing firmware for your GoPro and why you should be using it. Tip number eight, know when and where to use Hypersmooth. Hypersmooth is great for giving you gimbal-like stabilization without a gimbal. However, if you have your camera mounted on a tripod, on a table, or on a fence, and it's not moving, you don't need Hypersmooth on. It's not doing anything but using extra battery power and warming up your camera. So if your camera is being kept still, it's not moving, it's static, just turn off Hypersmooth. Tip number nine, know when and where to use Hypersmooth. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Hey, Demon View, you just said that. 
Yeah, I did, but that was in relation to keeping your camera still. What I'm talking about here is if you're just simply walking with your camera. If your camera is moving and you're walking, yes, turn on hyper smooth. But unless you're actually running over rough terrain, jumping over boulders and fallen logs, you don't need to set it at high or auto boost. In fact, if you do that, you're just cropping more into your image even more and then reducing resolution. So know when and where to use hyper smooth and believe me, having it at its lowest setting is actually going to be perfect for just about everybody. Tip number 10, GoPro software. GoPro currently offers quick for Android and iOS. Now this software is used to control your camera, add GPS stickers on older models, not the Hero 12 since it doesn't have GPS, and edit your footage on Android or iOS. GoPro do not offer Quick for Desktop. They used to, but they don't any longer. Quick, quick for Desktop is old, outdated, unsupported, discontinued software. If you download old software, you're going to find that A, it doesn't work very well as it's years out of date, and B, it likely won't work with your camera as the last camera it fully supported was the GoPro Hero 7. It was discontinued after that, and as a result, it simply won't support GPS data from later cameras as they all use completely different GPS format that Quick for Desktop won't recognize. It may also not play back video files from your latest GoPro either, as later GoPros use HEVC as the codec of choice, and this may not work with Quick for Desktop. However, just be aware, GoPro are working on a brand new version of Quick for Desktop, and it's due to be released in quarter four of this year. In fact, I believe it's coming for Mac on November, and then it will arrive on Windows in 2024 around the summertime. So look forward to that. Tip number 11, and this is where you try to change resolutions or you find that resolutions and frame rates are not available. Look, GoPro cameras can shoot in a variety of resolutions and frame rates. However, you may come across a situation where you can select different frame rates and resolutions. So what's going on? Well, there's a few reasons this can happen. A, all frame rates and resolutions are available in pro mode. But if you set your camera to easy mode, then your selections are a lot more limited. So make sure you're in pro mode and not easy mode. Your frame rates and resolutions can also become limited if you accidentally turn on the max lens mod mode. With a Hero 9, 10 and 11, this will lock your maximum resolution to 2.7K as this is the highest resolution the max lens mod supports. The max lens mod 2.0 will actually support up to 4K. So make sure you haven't activated that accidentally. And finally, if you're seeing odd frame rates such as 200 frames per second in ultra slow motion or 50 frames per second in normal modes, then you set the anti-flicker settings or the regional settings to 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz. So activate 60 hertz modes to get frame rates of 240 frames per second in slow motion or 60 frames per second in standard shooting modes. And then finally, tip number 12, the GoPro awards. Now these awards are going on all the time and GoPro have daily prizes for great photos, great videos, and you should be entering this. You can even win some cash. You could win a prize pack. You can even get a shout out from GoPro and gain a social media boost. Now GoPro did do a million dollar challenge every year and they say they're not gonna do one in 2023. Instead, they're gonna be running a completely different GoPro Hero 12 competition starting in October. And I believe they said there's daily prizes of up to $5,000. So keep an eye on the GoPro awards and start entering now. Even if you have a Hero 4, 5, 6 or 7, Enter, submit your photographs, submit your video clips, and see if you win. And there you have it, the top 12 tips for new GoPro owners or people who own a GoPro currently. Just follow these tips and you shouldn't have any issues with your brand new camera. If you like this video and you want to see more content like this, remember to click those like and subscribe buttons. Remember, this is not a sponsored channel. All these videos are made on my own dime and my own time. So you can really help out by taking the five seconds to just to click like and subscribe below. It doesn't cost you a penny to do so and it's a great way to give back to the channel. So folks, I really hope you had fun with your new camera and that you get really good shots. And hey, don't forget to enter those GoPro awards. Like I said, it's a great way to turn your video and photos into cold hard cash or get gift packs or discount vouchers from GoPro. And guess what? I'm going to put a link down below. So until next time, cheerio. Are you fed up waiting on the latest Demon View video? Are you bored not knowing what to do with all the time that you have on your hands? Do you want to have some direct feedback on what direction this channel takes or what videos get created next? If so, you need to join the Demon View community. Whereas shooting a video takes time, editing, putting in titles, color grading, and all of that, 
The Demon View community is kind of something that gets done daily and this is where you can keep up with all the latest feedback and all the latest stuff that's going on at Demon View and the news as it breaks. You can take part in community polls, uh, you can have your vote, you can give direct feedback regarding this channel and all for free. You don't even have to sign up for anything. Just check out the Demon View community tab on the YouTube channel. You'll find out about upcoming videos, latest news, bad jokes, polls, photos, and more. So check out the community tab on Demon View, and hey, I'll see you there.